I like that so much. Yeah. It's so good. Yay. It's like a renaissance painting. <laughs> we all got to be like eating fruit. One of us is going to be inexplicably naked. <laughs> yes. Oh, um, we should do see the fruit. We could do it. You want to? I'm down to be honest. We make it. Check out. You got to be like, <laughs> like gesturing to each other in strange ways. I'll take like, shirt off right. to shirt in North Carolina. That's good. Yeah. Get old golden girl. This is pen in the lot. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. This pen. This is. This is pen in the lost tribe. The song's called Boogeyman.
Brad, I feel good. Yeah, that started off really slow, which I liked. It was kind of like, nice. Shit, the titty gets real! <laughs> yeah. let's, let's get going here. Who are you people, and, and what do you do, and why are you, why are you here? Go. Uh, Penn Johnson. Playing music for about three years, and uh, just, you know, traveling the country, and now we have a van, and everything's way better than when we were in a Prius. We are here to play music and uh, weave some consciousness amongst the, the generations here and those yet to come. Before you were a touring musician, you were a writer. Yeah. What, what inspired that transition? I just figured that I could better express myself with a guitar in front of me and more people would listen. It was back during, yeah, it was back during the school. Well, senior year, I like pretty much organized my school to divest. We got into this meeting and we had a 10 minute presentation from us and then a 10 minute presentation from the guy wh whose company we were going to reinvest in. He was the chief sustainability officer and they were just on their phones and tablets the whole time. They didn't even listen. They didn't, they didn't give a shit, you know. And I was like, all right, well, if I can rally people around. And then I think the first time I was like, this might work was March Against Monsanto in Philly, you know. I played for people who were really, really listening. That was like the first, one of the first times I played. And that was like in the middle of the open. So people were walking by and hearing and coming up and asking me questions. And I was like, I'm living, you know, I was living in Northeast Pennsylvania. 20% of this goes to fight fracking, you know, which is, you know, it's a cool thing to do. And I did that for all of the first CD I sold. And I became broke very quickly. <laughs> Penn, you're here. But you also have the Lost Tribe. Who's... Explain that to me. Who's the Lost Tribe? That's a great question. The Lost Tribe is pretty much Jude and whoever else is in the area that we're in. You know, we pretty much take musicians from everywhere. Uh, Dave was on the second record. We just linked up with him again. Um, I played with Brian a couple times, and now he's here. Are we are we now part of the Lost Tribe? Absolutely, man. Yeah, it's like progressing into more like this reggae sort of folk soul. God, can't wait till Jude gets a saxophone. It's gonna make a <laughs> when you add band members, thing it, it you lose the when when he first started out it was just him, and then when you add me, it, it takes away. It's no longer a solo act. It's now a project, like a full project. When you have six people on stage, it there's more people whose input has to be taken. It molds the music in ways that you might not have initially intended. It's everybody brings their own little piece of the like we were talking about the recipe. Everybody, everybody brings their own little piece of the, the puzzle. And what you you start going off in one direction, thinking that it's going to end up being this, and then by the time you have all the pieces together, it's something way out in left field that you you didn't even initially think it would be. It's it's kind of cool to watch that progress. And that happens. I mean, I watched that happen with the first record we did. I watched it happen with the second record I did. You know, brought Dave into some songs that if Dave didn't play Cajon on some of those songs on that record, it would not be what it is. This is the same moment, like when punk rock discovered the fourth chord. That's this is his, his renaissance right now. Uh, you know, we haven't seen you in about ten months at this point. Nine months. When we first met you, it was like it's always been um, overtly political music, like no question, like this is what it's about. And I, I can identify even just since I've known you, like three phases where like. I remember when you were recording here, that music was like, this is what I'm thinking, and I'm just gonna say it. And then there was this, it sort of transitioned into like, these personal stories, and it seems like this whole new batch is like, way more imagery, kind of, um, is way more abstract, but still like, very obviously topical. It's just, I guess it's like, I mean, I played, you know, those songs that we recorded in Northeast Pennsylvania and got my life threatened a couple times, you know? <laughs> Um, by well, gas workers because it's through their livelihood, you know, they're doing what they can. You can't get mad about stuff like that. And when I was writing songs like that, I was noticing like a lot of hostility. And now, you know, like I've had people in like Trump president shirts hug me, you know, shake my hand, be like, I love your music. I'm like, I don't think you get it. So but, what do you do then? So someone with a big, you know, like, make America great hat again or whatever, like comes up and says, I love what you're doing, man, you're great. That happened to Kirkville. How do, you, yeah. how do you react to that? Uh, what do you do? Playing Boogeyman. What are musicians, what should musicians be doing who are interested in getting involved? Like, what's what's the music, and I know you've been an activist and you've been a musician separately and in some kind of combination of the two. What's what's a musician's job within the political movement? Drop the ego. Number one, it's not about yourself. 
just the message. A A one. It's not about anything that you have have to say or anything that you have to fucking offer. It's about what you can contribute to the cause in terms of like energy. I sort of started recently, you know, believing and understanding music as medicine. You know, it is a healing process that happens, and I think that's prevalent in songs like Hey Ah Hey, you know, which was inspired by a Native American chant for releasing. Which tribe, you know? I do not know, and before I record it, I actually want to get their permission. It's spiritual, you know, when it comes down to it. It's spiritual medicine, and that's sort of why we say we're, we weave consciousness through storytelling. You know, we're consciousness weaving spiritual folk. That's sort of the genre that I've given us. I've also helped, I've helped a lot of people on the, on the road. Um, we brought out a couple friends of ours, and one of them actually Snapchatted me the other day and was like, that was one of the most important experiences of my life. Like, thank you so much for doing that. Like, I'm doing this because of it, you know? So it's just sort of how we live our lifestyle it just inspires people to, to just come along, you know, yeah, become part of the tribe. Way. Three weeks ago. Yeah, I met three weeks ago. We met three, four months ago. Like, it's all, it all happens so fast, but like, life happens fast. You know, yeah. you gotta just, you gotta carpe that DM. <laughs> that's carpe it. that DM. <laughs> Four of us, bags on bags. There's a dog, a snake at one point. Yeah, it was next level. Was you had shit. a traveling snake. Yep. Uh, for snake. a couple of days. Okay. That's funny. One of the things that I just started asking bands is I was like, uh, you know, there's dog people and there's cat people, and I was like, there's definitely also dog bands and cat bands. <laughs> you guys, you guys think you're a dog band or a cat band? No, definitely a dog band. I think we could be a bear band. Oh.